I finished 12th out of 32 at the Dragonlance Set 7 Worlds Finals. This means unfortunately I was knocked out at day 2, but overall it was a pretty good run. Overall I'm really satisfied with my progress as a player and decently happy with my performance as a whole. In this video I'm going to be showing you 6 things that I learnt as I improved from day 1 regionals all the way up into my final day at Worlds. I spent countless hours vault reviewing, polling, and DMing with the best of OS and C, and so I want to say a massive shout out and thank you to everyone who helped me along my way. I would never have gotten to where I am without all of the players that helped me, and I talked to a lot of people, but the six that I wanted to give a special mention to are Keith, Angora, Jose, Cade, White Fox, and Reunic. As I feel I soaked the most amount of information from these players in particular, from my regionals prep all the way up until uh, Worlds Day 2. I learned different things from each of these players and it was really valuable learning how each of them thinks about the game differently. And so today I want to share six individual takeaways that I took from each one of these individuals. Keith taught me the value of choosing augments that reflect my current board strength. As a player, I think a lot about the future, and although it's good for itemization, economy, and game plan, etc., it often led me to tunnel vision on what is to become as opposed to worrying about what is. For example, when I was playing Soifen, I would place high value on augments such as Thrill, CB, etc. However, there are many instances where Stan United or Prep did a lot more for my current board, uh, and it's not really worth to sack stage 3, even if you think that it's going to be stronger later. You need to be considering about how much the augment affect you for the next 4 rounds before it actually gives you value when you pivot into your final comp. The value of saving HP at every stage is super super high, especially when playing in tournaments, as of course you're going to be versing higher strength boards on average. Your spot means everything and your decision should always reflect your current board plus the immediate future rather than just one of the two. Thinking further ahead is fine, but try not to tunnel vision on it too much. Angora taught me how to roll at high value timings. This set, I learned a lot about how to manipulate econ traits early to enable yourself to do a 3-5 level 7 roll down or a 4-2 or 4-5 fast 8. However, with Angora, I learned that you shouldn't be tunnel vision on just rolling at certain intervals and rolling all of your gold when you level. The value of rolling just a few times here and there at different points in the game is far more valuable than saving that extra 2-6 gold for your major roll downs. A common mistake I would make is playing a dead unit when I could just roll 1-3 to three times to find my next in. I learned how to apply this into my game and found myself rolling at 3-2 and 3-5 in a lot more of my games, allowing me to save HP for my eventual 4-2 or 4-5 official rolldown at 8, which allowed me to play a much stronger board on average which is extremely important especially in a tournament environment. This saved my low roll games as it increased my HP going into stage 4 and 5. Jose taught me to value board strength over Econ in a lot more of my spots. In day 1 of regionals, I put far too much faith in Astral Econ. He taught me the value of playing for strength, especially in a tournament environment, where on ladder I would get away with greeting Astral and Econ too much and never get punished. When playing at the top level, you can't afford to greed as much. Not only do you get gold for winning slash streaking, but maintaining HP advantage is much much more valuable, especially because you can't play for the win out in certain lobbies, as the average board strength would be much much higher, and players can cap boards a lot higher than certain cons. I learned the value of pivoting out of Econ in Stage 3 and not greeting double Econ when I didn't need to be. This allowed me to learn how to force pivots in Stage 3 and gauge lobby strength and act accordingly. I improved significantly after Day 1 of Regionals and his Vault review significantly helped my performance in Day 2 and 3. Kade is a very strong player when it comes to saving your gold and getting to level 9. He taught me the value of gold to cap boards higher, as there was a few instances when I was looking to cap my board a little bit higher on 8 than I really needed to. When things make little to no difference, you might as well greed in certain spots, as you're not really saving yourself any more placements by doing certain plays. You might as well save Econ and try and look to cap at 9, as this is the only way you're going to be changing your placement. The most notable was not caring too much about replacing Braum, as when you're changing Braum into an Idus, depending on your itemization, it's not going to be making a significant difference. So for instance, in this case, I could have just Nikoed my Zaya and played for extra gold. And the only reason you would really know to do this is just by valuing how cheap and how strong Braum is as a unit this set. And knowing the small things like this allow you to save gold in positions and gain yourself placements. Especially in a tournament environment, you want to try and minimize your greed, but knowing small things like this from Cardo's game knowledge allowed me to cap my board higher than otherwise would have. This increased my average placements in spots where I was usually just capped at a fourth. Also, Cardo was very morally supportive and helped me stay calm and confident for that reason too. White Fox and I did lots of odd reviews after regionals. We played countless games together and he was always down to stay up late and review infinite with me. 
Fox taught me how to play around new lines as he knew the meta comps really well. He spent a lot of time with me working on Seraphine Graves as it wasn't a comp that I knew that well going into regionals, however going into worlds I feel like it was one of my most well prepped comps. He taught me the true value of itemization in this comp and of course when you're playing TFT you can never greed BIS, however it's a little bit different with Seraphine as you need specific items to make the comp work and so it's for this reason that I only really leaned into Seraphine Graves if I had the augments and itemization to do so. And it's for this reason that my average placement in Seraphine in all of the scrims was actually really really high. It's just a shame that I only got to play it once out of the 10 games in Worlds, but of course when I finally did get the line to play Seraphine Graves, I managed to get a second and it was so so close to a first, but Reign's board was just a little bit too capped. And so it's for this reason that I'm extremely grateful that I learned how to play around certain lines, because you can't grid BIS in every situation, and so knowing to lean into certain comps at different instances is really really valuable. Reunic taught me how to play meta comps going into day 2 and 3 of regionals. He's a player that takes a lot of notes and studies lines very very well, so he was very knowledgeable about certain trait breakpoints which were very very strong in the meta. And luckily for him, he got knocked out day 1, so he put a lot of his efforts into me reaching day 2 and 3, and I'm super grateful for his insight. We played a few Varus and Deja games off stream, and although a lot of people thought that Zaya sucked in the patch going into regionals, I learned the power of 4 and 5 swift shots and managed to use it in a lot of my games, especially in day 3. I ended up learning the Zaya line quite well, and then I even brought it into Worlds as I played around swift shot spat. Knowing the difference between 3 and 4 swift shots was really, really helpful, as I didn't often play more than 2 swift shot. However, learning these break points was crucial for me to build really strong boards at 8, whilst being able to go 9 in certain spots. Overall, I'm super grateful of everyone that helped me prepare. Everyone's put in a lot of hours of their time that they didn't have to, and I look forward to returning the favor next set when one of them makes it to Worlds. Hashtag Prage for a C slot. Thank you to anyone else that I didn't already mention. All the chatting and stream, all the short DMs I had for others were still appreciated. Thank you to all the fans for supporting me. I love streaming my grind to Worlds and I appreciate each and every one of you. I will be back stronger for set 8. Back to back Worlds, and this time we're winning it all. That's it from me. Bye for now.